Greetings and welcome Hello. back to our Q and A reboot series number episode number four, right? Indeed, yes, yes. number four. Okay, reboot three, episode four. <laughs> let's so. make it confusing. Indeed. Uh, so let's dive in. Let's jump in. So the, yeah. I mean, so the show is, you ask questions, we answer them. Uh, Pat Skull. Yeah. Got all the, got get that all out of the way. Derpy Platypus one one seven asks question for next Q and A. Who's your celeb crush? Hmm. Huh, I, I don't currently have one. I'm like super fawning over, but like as a kid. You know, uh, Star Wars and all that. Natalie Portman was definitely my first and biggest uh, celebrity crush, and so was Mila Kunis. I think, yeah, going back to like my first big celebrity crush, I, I like to call it my hopeless celebrity crush because you know you'll never get with them, was Heather Graham circa Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me. God, oh, I was so in love with Indeed. her. So, good question. I mean, I guess you could say Jennifer Lawrence, but then it became. I do have a crush on Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, but she's uh, such an obvious. Yeah, Easy and same answer. with Daisy Ridley. That's my recent yeah. one. Is Daisy? I'd Ridley. say that's a. I don't know if everyone has that one. I'd say that's yeah. a. That's a fair one. Okay. What's up, Daisy? Friend of the show. She's probably yeah. watching this right now. Doc's Box Returns asks, "How is Skull this good at impressions?" I don't bloody know, mate. That I don't know what. <laughs> I guess that was supposed to be Junkrat. Um, yeah, I'll give you someone. Um, Alfred I, from Batman. What? Oh, some men, Master Bruce. Want to watch the world burn? No, <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, uh, I think uh, they're probably referring to like video game raps, like the yeah, Overwatch yeah. rap battles. I always tell people, uh, and I told John when I was coaching him the first time he did a voice for Soldier, find a line that the character says, like an iconic line, yeah. and just listen to it over and over and keep saying it. And so when you're, especially for me, when I'm rapping as the character, if I start to lose the voice of the character, I go back to that iconic line, like, yeah. what was the soldier one I gave you? Uh, I'm, I'm not, not a, yeah. I'm not and a young man. Obviously anymore. for Rick and Morty, it's Morty. Yeah, yeah, just go back to that. I always so, I have to say Morty first. Find an iconic line, try to get that down, and then grow from there. Liam Hoy asks, hey, I know I've already asked, but I'll ask again. Have you ever considered releasing the music from your videos without any lyrics? You did some karaoke a while back and love to see more. So we did those karaoke's as part of a, Kind of campaign and uh they're just really popular songs and so we put their instrumentals out essentially because we put the songs out with no lyrics and the reason we don't do that is just because they're all instrumentals made in-house and once they're in the wild you don't know what people are going to do to it and yeah. um they're my babies yeah. i like to protect them so, so it's that it's, simple it's not like i don't know because we get this question a lot so it's, i wouldn't say it's completely out of the question but they're just i i always call them my babies i'm very yeah. protective of i mean them, who, so. maybe we'll do like <laughs> things that are Five years and older, but yeah, it's just it, it's just <laughs> there it, comes a time for the babies to spread their wings, yeah. maybe, and fly the coop. But once it's in the internet's hand, and time is time, time and time again, the internet has proved they don't care about copyright. Yep. And so my worst fear is a SoundCloud issue. rapper like yeah. stealing my instrumental and then claiming it as their own. But you know, anyways, yeah. So it's kind of addressing why, and it's not a definite no, but it's not a. It's not on our. It's not. On, it's not on our. That's to -do our list. reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We got Nicholas Bor Borjoquez. Sorry if I butchered that. What's your worst high school moments? Lol. Big fan, by the way. Love the content. Thank you, Nicholas. Oh boy, worst high school moment. Oh, I didn't think about this one. I could, I'll, uh, I'll go. What you think? Okay. Uh, I actually had a pre. I, I I stayed low key in high school. I had just moved to a new school, new state. So I kind of just coasted through blending in. But middle school, I had tons, like any other middle schooler. So I guess I'll just share one is I, I just like a deodorant, like I, I spilt it all over me somehow as a, just an idiot kid. So I had just deodorant stains all over me. And actually that reminds me, in high school, I had Axe body spray in my, in my backpack and the cap came off and something, a book or something lodged on it and it just held on it probably for three minutes and I didn't notice I even mean, just the room reeked of like oh super God. saturated uh the classroom reeked of super saturated axe body spray and everyone just Dude, was looking around trying to figure out what was going on that's was, like almost worse than B.O. it was, it was pretty nauseating oh God. I mean I hate it was it was terrible because I have a lot of bad middle school moments I remember one time I was running out to the bus after school and my backpack wasn't fully zipped and spilled open and all the buses were lined up in like single file so our bus had to wait with all the other buses behind it because I had spilled all my books and everybody on all the buses could see me scrambling to pick up my stuff. I had my trombone case too, oh which was God. even worse. I'm trying to think in high school. I almost slept through my AP calculus test, so that was a terrifying morning and I had diarrhea afterwards, oh. but I got a five on the AP calculus test, so it turned out to be that's a good the, That's thing, the key so. for a good score. Yeah. Shadow Wolf asks for your next Q&A, how'd you meet? So our... Younger siblings were in the same grade, 
kind of started preschool and stuff together. Mm -hmm. And because of that, our moms were like, oh, we both have these older siblings that could get along. And we met at a Chuck E. Cheese, yeah. which is, I guess, kind of fitting considering the- Five Nights uh, at Freddy's, yeah, dude. The success Five Nights <laughs> at Freddy's We always had. joke about that. Like so, Chuck E. Cheese, of course, yeah. our old stomping grounds. Yeah, so, but otherwise we lived down the street from each other. We always were living close and it just took that kind of meeting yep. at Chuck E. Cheese, I guess, to solidify it. So. Yeah, and the friendship has yeah. blossomed since. Spoopy Myers asks, and will Andrea Storm Caden ever be in a live action vid? Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Uh, we were supposed to do one this year, actually, in the fall, but uh, due COVID. to COVID-19, that didn't yeah. happen, obviously. But eventually, yeah, we're uh, hopefully 2021. Yeah. That's and the plan. A lot, of, uh, a lot of people ask why she isn't in them, and it's because she's in Australia. Yeah. Um, you know, she she has a job too, so it, it's it, we need like a year of you kind of heads up for her to get the right time off, for her to fly across the world, ac account for that jet lag, mm -hmm. and then do a production. And it's a yeah. lot of work. It's our, a lot of work without even having to take someone in from Australia, so. Exactly, especially because our shoot days are so long, we definitely want to make sure she's at 100% recovered from yeah. the trip over, so. Um, Logistics, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I guess that's the, the answer to the second question that is, this wasn't asked, but generally is asked, is that's why she's not always there, or mm -hmm. hasn't been there. Lawful951159 asks, what is the highest mountain you've ever been on? I don't know what the mountains were specifically, but I was in the Rocky Mountains, Rocky Mountain National Park. I went to a ski, uh, ski mountain, uh, it's like snow something. It's a really creative name, snow, <laughs> something snow. Snow, snow mountain. Snow peak, snow park, I don't know. But it was like 1200, uh, the elevation was 12,000 12, feet, wow. which was pretty gnarly. Damn. I think mine is Mount Chakora, which isn't super high, but it, it's a mountain in New Hampshire. Uh, and I hiked it with my family and there was like this super scary ledge part. I just remember it was, it, it's a pretty high mountain. I think it might be the highest mountain in New Hampshire, but definitely not like, a, you know, gargantuan. It's not like Everest. Paranol or Paranol. <laughs> asks, would you rather wrestle a bear, an alligator, or a hippo? This is a no-brainer, yeah, an alligator. A, yeah, alligators Dude, by Dude, uh, hippo, hippos are almost more lethal than like... Well, there's nothing a, you could do against a hippo. No, you a, could... a bear, you're fucked. Nobody can fight a bear. Even John Cena yeah. couldn't fight a bear. But an alligator, if you can at least get its mouth clamped shut, yep. I mean, it's still gonna probably kill you depending on how It's also bears. longer, I mean, they can probably and their I, tail can break your legs. Yeah. Like one hit from their tail will snap your but, spine. But I mean, e alligator easily. If, if someone has a different opinion, please let us know in the comments and convince us why a bear or hippo would be better yeah, to fight. Yeah, if you can wrestle a hippo, please tell me what your workout routine is. Inez Evanamore says, can you say Cowabunga Dude in a surfer dude accent? One, two, three. Cowabunga, cowabunga dude. dude. Yeah, I added a little um, Well, he, he said dude. Oh, Cowabunga Dude, shit, we gotta do it again. Right. One, two, three. Cowabunga, dude! Dude, we should dress up as uh, Ted and... No, Ted uh, and Earl. B Bill and Ted. No, Bill and Ted. <laughs> I know, just... Infinite asks, what is a video game that you can go back to and never gets boring every time you return? Initially, I thought Overwatch in recent memory. Overwatch is just such a good yeah. go-to game. But really, I think like Super Mario 64 or Banjo-Kazooie for me. Banjo-Kazooie is a timeless game and it's so dynamic, all the levels, like it's such an adventure, so yeah. yeah for me, I mean Overwatch obviously, and then the, any like any RTS, I think that's the beauty of RTS is, is they're pretty different. You can try different strategies, um, especially if, if you're battling online. Um, I don't know, I'm a big RTS guy. No one else, I'm, I'm alone out here in this world, yeah. like in these game <laughs> modes, but or these game genres, but hey. They're awesome. Dreamer X Panda asks, step was Skull. like an inch or two. Uh, what's your process of creating a song? How do you come up with melodies, beats, and lyrics? Uh, t typically, I start with a beat because um, I want to get the vibe of the song first. But every once in a while, I'll be driving in the car or in the shower or on the toilet sometimes and just come up with an idea for a lyric or, or a melody usually. If I'm like, if the idea just comes to my brain, it's usually a melody or an idea for a chorus. But I'd say 90% of the time, I'm starting with the beat and then building from there. So that's just me. Michael. I don't know why I took it. It was such a normal name. I guess I was ready to be <laughs> taken off guard. What is this Michael asks, doesn't it get annoying when people constantly beg you to make a song they game about a game they like? Ooh. Yes and no. So it does not annoy us because it means people are excited and they're engaging with us and that makes us happy. But it is annoying because it happens all the time, and if that's the interaction that we're getting, it's so um, 
It's just, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? You know, mm -hmm. and and that's kind of that can get disheartening and uh, just frustrating because you know, let's talk. Let's you know, let's talk about other things and and you know that serves you. You know, let's uh, let's talk about something or interact in a way that kind of serves everyone or both of us. You know, just especially, a more healthy way. Especially on like Q and A's and streams yeah. when we say like, hey guys, let's uh, talk about other stuff, and it's just like floods of like, do this rap, do this rap. That's where it gets the most annoying. And also, we have a catalog of twelve years of songs, so there's a chance we might have done it. Yeah. And YouTube, YouTube is the second world's biggest second biggest search engine in the world, so use that. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, Second, you've kind of, if, if I mean, this is a little bit more unrealistic, but for those that go back and look, you can kind of see what we make, what we don't make. You know our style, you know what, our, what we're into, mm -hmm. and uh, usually that answer will be question. That answer will be questioned. That question will be answered if you just kind of look out of our history, look for what we have done, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Dominus76 asks, what piece of music did you make that you thought would be meh, but turned out to be a hit with the crowd? And I mean a big hit. Well, um, the obvious the, one. The go-to is join us for a bite, because uh, that I already had the beat and like the melody and most of the harmonies and everything planned out, and we needed a song to do that week, and I think Sister Location was about to come out, so... Yeah. it was another I, channel. I was like, hey, I got an animator. You have a song that you want to do? Yeah. And you're like, sure, whatever. Let's see. See what happens, and so it blew up. We had no idea it was going to blow up like that. Yeah. Um, but another one that I was pleasantly surprised with was... Um, I guess Venom. I liked that song. I didn't think the song was mad, but and it didn't like blow up like join us for a bite. But yeah. I didn't expect it to do as well as it did. So that was I mean, a cool surprise. I think it made. I mean, the way people received it, I think it made sense. It did well. Yeah. Um, obviously, I think it's a terrible movie. It has its redeeming qualities, but it, Tom it's, Hardy's it's, great. It's interesting how the mainstream audience absolutely loved it. Mm. Um, for me, Lawbreakers. There's like, oh there's yeah. No, I mean, the song was really catchy and well done. Uh, obviously, kudos to this guy, but mm -hmm. the game was a huge flop, mm -hmm. and no one cared. Yeah. And so it's interesting that that song did well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And obviously, there's been great songs that haven't done well just on their merit, you know. Mm -hmm. So well, there's a. The, let's go to the next question. Yeah. H eight K eleven asks, what is the song you thought would be a great success but didn't do great? Mm, that's a good, good follow up uh, question to the last one. I mean. I don't know. Oh, there's I, a lot. I was thinking in recent memory, uh, the Rage 2 rap, but I mean that game didn't really blow up. Unfortunately, sometimes the video co corresponds to how the game does, um, but I loved that beat. I loved that chorus and, you know, it just didn't do too well. Also, oh, the Gears 5 rap. That's what I was going to say. Gears 5, I think that was a popular game, Did, but I, uh, and the the video, like the people who watched it liked it, but I think it only has like 300,000 views. I thought it was going to do a lot yeah, better. I don't and think it has I, a lot of views, but I, I remember feeling those are good views. Something yeah, about them felt like good, solid, overall Yeah, that's um, the other views. thing. It, just because you get a lot of views, it also depends on the type of audience you're attracting yeah, and too, audience so. retention. Yeah, um, but speaking just in terms of views, I think that was another shocker for yeah. me. I mean, kind of... And answer the question, but the Elon Musk one, we, we were, he's, oh, he's the meme lord. We thought we were gonna, he was going to see it, we thought it was going to blow up, Yep. and uh, it didn't. So, Man. that was a disappointment. Now, yep. we, now we hate Elon Musk. Yep. <laughs> Garrett asks, do you like reading? If so, what's your favorite book? Um, I do like reading. Uh, I think it's a great way to kind of expand your vocabulary, get a lot of insights. Uh, just a good way to kind of uh, complement, you know, this thing in here. And so, Blech. in terms of... Uh, uh, favorite books, I like City of Thieves, which is actually funny enough, written by David Benioff, which he is the uh, infamous oh. show, one of the infamous showrunners of Game of Thrones. And, I, uh, I personally am not too happy with him, but uh, I love the book Sea of Thieves. It's about this like pair of Russian... City of Thieves. Yeah, City of Thieves. Yeah. What did I say? Sea of Thieves. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's about these two Russian boys kind of navigating, uh, you know, uh, Leningrad or Stalingrad during World War II. It's just a really good book. And overall, I like alternate history books. Those are fun. And I'm also right now into Eric Larson, um, Devil in the White City. That's cool. It's about essentially America's first serial, serial killer at the World's Fair. If you like Bioshock Infinite, check that book out because that's what inspired Bioshock Infinite, actually. Oh yeah, I think you're telling me yeah. about that. Um, I hate reading. I hate it. And I don't want to be a bad influence on you kids, but I was like really good at English and writing essays on books I didn't read in high school and college. So you don't have to read. You can spark notes it. Your teachers are going to tell you they know bullshit. They don't. They don't. But anyways, books that I did love in recent memory, I actually did read front to back Ready Player One, 
I've been reading, a, going off Bioshock, a rapture book. Nothing like super, no historical smart fancy stuff like this guy. Um, and then the last book, other than that, that I read front to back was Angels and Demons and the Da Vinci Code. Uh, back in freshman year of high school. Like, I don't read. I hate <laughs> it. So that's about it. But I love those ones that I mentioned. All right, last question for today is kids. <laughs> the kids want to know. Kids asks, did you learn music theory? Nope. Uh, just like your teachers won't know if you didn't read a book, you don't need music theory. I'm just kidding. Don't listen to me. I'm a bad influence. But no, I, I didn't learn music theory. I went to school for film. You were a wind ensemble. I was in wind ensemble, so I, I took, I was like in band, I was in honors band in high school, but I didn't really take any music theory classes. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that whatever your craft is, it, especially when it's a creative craft, you, you've got to have an inherent ability or knack for it. You can definitely get better at it by yeah. learning music theory or learning, you know, art history, whatever it is. You, de that's definitely important, but for me personally, I didn't. You also just so. got to do it. You just, yes, that's the other thing. With music, pe people who ask me like, how do I get good at music production? Keep doing it. That's it, that's really it. Yeah guys, that's uh, questions. We kinda got a lot of them, but hey, we're only doing one more, so I might as well pack them all in. So we have one more episode of questions and answers. I don't know when it'll come out, maybe a couple weeks. But we hope you guys enjoyed this. Like and subscribe, follow. Also, this is now JTTV, so it's kinda got a cool. Got brand. Yeah, maybe we'll get so. t-shirts. Saw a guy pour coffee out for some reason and didn't throw out the coffee cup next oh, to the yeah. trash can. Oh my God. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we see a lot of weird things from this, this this window in the streets. Yeah, if you see us looking over here, there's some. <laughs> there's some, something weird going on. Yeah. But uh, later. Peace, guys. <laughs>